In this video, we're going to introduce the event object. Now, when we've been working on our previous videos, the event object has always been there, but we haven't actually taken advantage of it. Let's take a look at some code, and I'll tell you what exactly the event object is. So in our example here, we have an event listener for the mouse event mouse over action. And we're executing our callback function hover. In our callback function, if you remember, we always have this ev mouse event object that's a parameter of the function. This is the event object. We've never used this before, but we're actually going to start using it in this particular example. In this case, I'm giving it the name E. E is a traditional name for an event object. Yeah, you might also see EVT or event um, being used to name the event object. The event object contains all kinds of information about the spe specific event that actually happened. So in this case, we have the mouse event. The mouse event it, uh, object itself contains the name of the object that the event was broadcast from. So in this case, we're using E to access what object actually fired the event. So E has multiple things inside of it. The one that we're going to be using in this one is called target. So in this example, I am applying my mouse event event listener to the main timeline. So I'm not associating it with a specific object. I'm associating it with everything that's on the timeline. If you look, I have five circles on the stage. Each one of these circles has a specific name. So I've given names like ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, and ball five. Now, when I actually access my, uh, when I actually use these, uh, access my code in my main timeline, I'm using the event listener for everything that's on the main timeline. So it includes all five of the objects that are on the stage. So when I mouse over, say, ball one, the event, the timeline is going to capture my mouse event, and the event object itself is going to tell me which object the event actually took place on. That's called the target. So here, I'm using the event object E, and I'm accessing the name of the object that the event took place, which is target. I'm then going to modify a property of target called alpha, which represents transparency. I'm going to get it at a transparency of 0.5, which is half transparent. The other one I'm going to access is called name. Target represents the object itself, and it's a pointer to the, to the object that ActionScript can use. Name is the actual name that I've given the object in a string. So in this case, I'm going to use the name of that object and add that to my trace statement so I can see what object I'm working with on the output panel. So let's actually take a look at this and see how it runs. So right now I have my mouse events are being fired as I, as I move across the screen. But right now it's not actually doing anything to mouse. I'm not actually mousing over anything yet. So as soon as I mouse over this particular object, you'll see that it becomes semi-transparent. And I have a new message in the output panel. It says, now over ball one. It's able to access the specific data of the event and use that to say which object has to be transparent and what's the name of the object I want to add to the output panel. I can continually add more and more and more objects, and I never have to change any of my code because all of these different actions are dynamic and they're actually working on all the objects that are on the timeline. So this is an example of how you can use the event object to drive dynamic, uh, dynamic event handlers in ActionScript 3.